Hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Usheng Bagush. Monster Killer. Now then, let's see, where were we? Ah, uh, yes. Our wonderful warriors down here in the entry hall had just finished foiling another siege by those frosty barbarity goblins. Goblins who are now desperately trying to retreat up our stairwell. Those sneaky bastards. They're trying to get up here to the old fortress level because they know there's entrances out into the caverns here. And once they hit those caverns, they're home free. We'll never be able to catch them. But something they don't know is that we currently have a, uh, a new visitor here in the caverns by the name of Zureng das Mungasasp. We didn't really get a good chance to take a look at this guy last episode, so let's do that. Zureng das Mungasasp, a towering eyeless ankylosaurid. It has a pair of long antennae and it is slavering. Its dark taupe scales are blocky and close set. Beware its poisonous sting. Oh yes, a terrifying creature to be sure. Eyeless, huh? And a poisonous sting. Man, I wouldn't want to get caught by this guy. But that's not something we have to worry about. No, no. That would be a problem for these goblins. I'll tell you, I am very excited to see what happens here. Now, let's see. First things first. I'm going to take all the squads off duty. The invaders are currently retreating, so we don't have to worry about them anymore. And, uh, yeah. I think we're good to go. Are you ready? I know I am. Let's do this. Game is unpaused, we are following the beast, who is indeed heading into the old fortress, towards the stairwell. Please be awesome, please be awesome. And the creature is fighting, I'm seeing some blood. The creature is wounded. It is enraged. And it has died, that's a shame. I see it killed at least one goblin though. Better than nothing. Yeah, that was fairly anticlimactic, huh? Oh well. Well, it looks like one of the goblins managed to jam an iron pike in the creature's lung, and the beast then turned and bit the goblin in the arm, tearing apart the arm, opening an artery. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, but other than that, it looks like that beast didn't do too much. A single kill. Yeah, you know, that is a goddamn shame. Screw it, I want to see if we can catch any of these bastards. It's gotta be worth a try, right? Oh, wait a second, it looks like a lot of these goblins aren't even trying to escape yet. You idiots. That's very foolish. Following our militia commander. They're rounding the corner, just destroyed a troll, moving into the goblins. Three dwarves versus, I don't know what, a half dozen goblins at least. <laughs> they don't stand a chance. Yeah, that's a slaughter. Good job, dwarves. Now we're over here following Logum, one of the spikes, who's doing a damn fine job taking care of a couple goblins over here. Yeah, no problem whatsoever. That's right, get the hell out of here, you goblins. We're tired of your crap, obviously. And it looks like one goblin has escaped out into the caverns. A shame. But the dwarves still aren't satisfied. They're now heading up the rampway. Ooh, I think they just killed another goblin. Fantastic work. Keep going, dwarves. Catch them if you can. They're better off dead. Ooh, gotcha, you bastard. Oh man, this is great. I didn't think we could catch this many of them even. Yes, dwarves, go! Chase them down, destroy them! Don't let them crawl back to their disgusting home. Ooh, yeah, there's another. Good fighting dwarves, not too shabby at all. Very good work. Just got the one troll left here. Not a big deal at all. Ooh, they're enraged, fighting with one of the sand blades, and they're dead. There's a couple trolls, actually. Damn troublemakers. Easy enough, really. Oh, and one more trying to get into our museum. Get the hell out of here, you bastard. You're not getting in there. <laughs> Not a chance. Done. Siege is over. Super easy and fun, right? I certainly thought so. Yeah, as far as sieges go, no issue at all, really. Now then, you lazy bastards. Everyone back to work. We have a lot to do around here. That's for sure. There you go, back out to the caverns. Start picking up those corpses and whatever else you have to do. There's a lot of it. Figure it out. Anywho. Uh, oh no. You know, it's funny how you can go from feeling so good just to feeling like crap. Oh, we have a dead dwarf here in the stairwell. The stairwell that's taken so many good dwarven lives. It's Asmal. One hump. Damn everything. You know, he must have got taken out at some point when the dwarves took the stairwell. Well, it totally stinks. He was a good leader and an overall funny guy. In fact, he had the uncanny ability to always find the humor in every situation. Rest well, one hump. Your name and deeds will be remembered. Oh, this fortress, I'll tell you. Life here is a roller coaster. Well, I suppose it's good that the dwarves had some time to work on our new mausoleum, which is now pretty much all set. We have a couple additional touches to get in place, but it shouldn't be too taxing. We already have 100 coffins in here, and I have 100 more slated to be built. And down here at the entrance, I'm thinking we need something. 
You can see I've already put a couple pedestals here, but what to put on those pedestals? I actually have a little bit of an idea. It's gonna take a bit though, but that's okay. We have some other things to do in the meantime. Now then, let's see. We just got attacked by a wear tapir. We had another goblin siege and a forgotten beast attack. And we're doing all kinds of crazy stuff here in the fortress as well. So let's just settle down for a second and try to gather our bearings, huh? All right, first of all, the date. It's currently the 27th of Slate, 259, mid-spring. Usheng Vagush has almost been here for a decade, and it certainly feels like we've been here longer than that. I mean, look at how much has happened. It's crazy, really. I really have to pop in and take a look at the date more often. I think I said I was gonna do it more often, like seven episodes ago. Never did, but yeah, we'll see what happens. And another thing I'd like to mention, Last episode we did have those two goblin sieges, and you may have noticed I still have not let go our forgotten beast here in this pen. You know, strangely enough, I've kind of grown attached to that big bastard. Not so eager to throw his life away so easy. I mean, look at what happened to that forgotten beast who went after those goblins in the stairwell. It just died. Hardly did anything at all, really. So I think we're gonna do something more interesting with this forgotten beast. And I would like to trap a different forgotten beast. Like this one over here, actually. Yeah, a few episodes ago this one popped up. And it's been over here ever since, just kind of raging through the caverns. Ankazum Anosma is the name. Nasty beast. With deadly blood, I believe. I can't imagine myself getting so attached to this one. And now let's see, let's take a look at our current fortress projects. The various levels of our workshop area are quickly filling with supplies, finally getting some real production in place. Good job, dwarves. Crocodile pen looking nice. Gotta put some nest boxes in there. Couldn't hurt to have some more crocodiles. And we can eat their spare eggs, too. Delicious. You know, another thing I'd like to do, just real quick, is to make another entrance out into the caverns. Right now, all the dwarves have to go through this forgotten beast pen to get out there, or through the farm area up top here. Kind of annoying either way. And so yeah, we'll just carve out a small passage. Just like this. That'll do the trick. And there we go, that should just about do it right there. A couple doors in place, and a bridge. Just so we can lock it up in a pinch. Now, let's see what else. Hi, yes, our mausoleum. Still kind of a mess, but it gets the job done. And if we have a look down here, you can see I placed the mummified remains of both those female cyclops who attacked the fortress just right here, right at the entrance. Kind of creepy, right? Super imposing. Sure to make any would-be grave robbers think twice about their actions. We'll call them the Watching Sisters, guardians of the catacombs of Monster Killer. Yep, I like it. Carry on, ladies. This mausoleum is nice and all, but we need something else as well, a special place where the greatest heroes of the fortress can be memorialized. Well, let's see, we'll come up one level here, and we'll make a second tomb up to the north. And we'll make it this shape right here. I don't really have any concrete plans in mind, but it's a start, right? And while they're doing that, uh, how about a place for a museum? Yeah, I think we should start putting some thought into that. And, well, why don't we put it up here? Coming right off the meeting hall, over to the east, there's a big unused area over here. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Let's do it. There we go, kind of using the same shape as the shrine chamber. And I'll tell you what, I think we should even put different levels in here. We do have a ton of artifacts in the fortress now. One, two, three levels. And we'll channel out the middle of the top and middle levels. Should be pretty cool. Get to work, dwarves. And I imagine it'll keep the dwarves busy for quite some time now. And so, on to more important matters. Now, last episode we were attacked by a were tapir, a creature that was very similar to one that attacked us a few years ago. I'm sure you remember there was a bad outbreak. We lost maybe seven, eight dwarves, something like that, including Venomblood's mother, and we ended up just chalking up the whole occurrence to bad luck. But that were tapir that just attacked us, well, someone spotted it after it turned back into its original form, and that form was an elf with scarlet hair, very similar to the elves of Ilialefa, our moody trading partners. So I'm thinking they're trying to start some trouble with us, and I'm not too happy about it. And so the next time they show up, hmm, well, I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do. Turn them away? Attack their merchants? One thing I know is that we can't sit back and take that. Certainly not. That being said, there are no gray areas involving our other troublesome neighbors. The goblins of the Frosty Barbarity. They've been a constant pain in our ass since the very beginning, and it's time we dealt with them. I'm thinking we attack them in their homes. It's time for us dwarves to strike. We have a nice strong hold over the desert here, and those goblins and the rest of the world have to know that the dwarves are back. And we mean business. And so, what the hell, let's do it. The time is now, dwarves. All right, now let's have a look here. Well, we do have a couple of dark goblin pits that are fairly close to the fortress, nearly a day's travel away, with a population of about 100. Although this place here, the City Seduce, uh, has a population of about 75 goblins. And there's also rumored to be an artifact here, a book, I believe. Yeah, this looks like a prime target. And now we have a couple of options here. We can raid it, where squads will try to avoid detection, sneak around the place, you know. Or we can pillage it, where we just run up and attack the place loudly. 
We can also raise the place, openly attacking and destroying the site. Or we can demand tribute as well. Hmm, that'd be pretty interesting. Well, how about we start off with some raiding, sneak around these places, see if we can free some captives. Uh, I am going to turn off loot other items. Not terribly interested in bringing back a bunch of useless crap, you know? So yeah, this looks good. And we will assign the sand blades and the brass spikes. 20 dwarves. Let's do it. Good luck, warriors. Although I don't think you'll need it. Just a bunch of stupid goblins anyways. Yes, I have utmost faith in my warriors. Although I'm not terribly certain why you'd want to bring a plump helmet man carcass with you on the mission. Well, hopefully he has some plan for it. And let's take a look at our museum. Well, all carved out already, actually. Fantastic. Just gotta carve out the middle of the second level here. Oh, and we just got a message that the sand blades and others have returned. Let's take a look. Mission report. Raid City Seduce. The summer 259. Alright, they went out. Arrived at City Seduce. They searched the place. Found Foundations of City Seduce. A book or a scroll or something. And were spotted while leaving by the Goblin Ferritu Gear Whiskers. Interesting. But no matter. But also kind of boring. I was hoping for some combat. I suppose that means we should be attacking them openly, huh? We have a new book here, that's pretty cool. Just kind of sitting out here in the desert still. And you know, I guess we do still have a scroll sitting out in the desert over here as well. Boy, I guess we should start putting some real thought into a library, huh? Well, well, well. Our warriors have returned just as the elven diplomat from Ilialetha has arrived. Now, let's not do anything too rash, dwarves. This is just a diplomat after all, and the human wagons are here as well. We don't want to be getting too violent in front of them. You may enter, elf, but no promises. Greetings from the woodlands. We have much to discuss. We elves are partial in particular to the trees in the forest surrounding your lands. Although we are loath to spare a single branch to your senseless slaughter, we are willing to ask that you cap your tree fells at 100 until we next meet. I will try to return next year as I am able. Okay, take it easy. Let's just settle down here. The human diplomat is here, in the same room as the elven diplomat. We, we don't want to go doing anything too rash. Hmm. Well, we're currently on the attack with the goblins, and I suppose it'd be best if we don't open up another front just yet anyways. All right, I'm gonna say we can grant this request. Let's discuss the specifics though. We can part with at most 108 trees, Butcher. Butcher, wow. All right, I'm gonna tell you what, just because the human diplomat is here, we can abide by this. Let us work towards mutual coexistence. Okay. Oh, now they're sharing some info with us. Well, that's, that's a good thing, right? Although we do not always see eye to eye. <laughs> I bid you farewell. May you someday embrace nature as you embrace the rocks and mud. Not making it easy. Boy, I really hope that human diplomat is watching. Oof, was that a good call? Really hoping it was. We had that wear tapir attack, and that elf was definitely an Ilialetha elf. Hmm, I don't know. Well, I'm not gonna worry too much about it for now, I guess. Let's just hope that the next time the elves stir up some trouble with us, the human diplomat isn't here. No worries, dwarves. The elves will get theirs, eventually. But anyways, looks like we have another artifact here. Zan Cybercast, a larder lord, has created Mishoslerteth Kethil Enal, a beak dog leather tunic. Oh man, that is so cool. And she offers it to the dwarves of Usheng Vagush. Wow, that's really something. Let's have a look. Beach Tangled, the principle of reputations. This is a beak dog leather tunic, all craft dwarfships of the highest quality. It is encrusted with oval amethyst cabochons and rose-cut smoky quartzes, and encircled with bands of round, brilliant-cut amethysts. This object is adorned with hanging rings of nickel and menaces with spikes of beak dog leather. On the item is an image of Dead Duck Humor Bridge the Dwarf in gold opal, as well as an image of square, brilliant-cut gems in high wood, and an image of a many-pointed star in amethyst. Wow, that's really something. Dead Duck Humor Bridged. Not too sure who that is exactly. Well, I just hopped over into Legends mode real quick, and it looks like Dead Duck is the Baroness of Trammel Whip, a settlement belonging to the Grand Lancers, our civilization. Hmm, interesting. It'd be a little cooler if it was an image of our queen, but eh, it's still something. Anyways, fantastic artifact, and thank you very much for making it. Back to Fortress Affairs. You can see there are currently a whole bunch of dwarves here in the Big Bad Dune Hall. Well, that's because we're having a little problem with Crundles out in the caverns currently. Similar to last episode, we have a couple of crundles here crawling up the cavern walls, which was really screwing with my peasants, who were, once again, crawling up the cavern walls to escape the crundles, apparently. 
it was kind of an issue. So I turned the burrows on and my dwarves can't go in the caverns for now. But that's okay, it'll give us time to work on our new museum over here. You can see I currently have this support in place, which is holding up the center area of the second level here. Just a giant disc of stone, you know? And that's all hooked up to this lever out here, which we can pull. And there we go. Instantly dug out. And now we'll start a smoothing. And another thing I'd like to attend to while we're locked up in our tavern, we have a couple of nicknames to hand out, ones that were well earned last episode. I always forget to hand out nicknames in the heat of the moment, but let's see here. First off, we have Aina no Kimisan, our military commander. Who could forget her beautiful fighting last episode? What did she kill, seven trolls while overexerted? Yeah, she definitely earns a nickname. And so, Ainad, I bestow upon you the nickname, Blue Axe. Just because a troll's blood is mm, blue-ish. And she's always using that copper axe. Yeah, dwarves are going to be telling stories of her and her blue axe for years to come. Magnificent work, Ainad. And our second nickname will be going to Kule Okunzeneg. A dwarven child. One who punched a giant cave toad into unconsciousness last episode. Quite a feat for a four-year-old, certainly. What a little badass, huh? Also, another interesting fact. Kula is the youngest son of Moses Astral, the Baroness of Usheng Vagush. Just letting you know. Well, little Kula, from now on you shall carry with you the nickname Warpfist. For your astounding feat of punching a giant cave toad. You're gonna make a great Usheng Vagush warrior one day. Certainly braver than some other dwarven children I know. Namely ones who only get bitten by giant cave spiders. Woo, big deal. No, but seriously, I do kind of feel bad for Venom Blood now, whose room is right down the way from Warp Fists. Yeah, I imagine the dwarves telling Venom Blood's story more of as a comedic entertainment. I mean, it is amazing that he survived, but you know, it didn't take too much bravery on his part, I guess. But man, oh man, that Warp Fist. Wow, what a kid, huh? Brave is all get out. Well, we're gonna have to keep eyes on these two. Perhaps I sense a rivalry forming. Very interesting. Anywho, now that that's out of the way, we have to get back to work, dwarves. Those damn crundles are still out there, but mm, I think we'll manage. Oops, speaking of crundles, I also placed some new statues up here on top of the walkway leading to the tavern. Crundle statues. All striking, menacing poses, kind of like gargoyles. I thought that'd be pretty cool. Another little side note there. Okay, okay, anyways, uh, for real, get back to work. And I'm also thinking we should head out on another raid. What do you say? Yeah, I'm thinking that sounds like a pretty damn fine idea. Let's do it. I'm thinking we should head back to City Seduce. Yeah, definitely. But this time, we'll pillage the place. Openly attack them. Let's spill some goblin blood, dwarves. And we will once again send the brass spikes and the sand blades. Very good. Head out, dwarves. Best of luck to you. But again, I'm sure you won't need it. Oh, it looks like the sand blades and others have returned. Fantastic. Let's see how it went. Mission report and spoils report. Very cool. But mission report first. Pillage City Seduce, summer 259. All right, they went up, and there was a whole bunch of combat. Some dead goblins. Oh man, yeah. Whole bunch of action this time. Let's take it from the top. It looks like our dwarves were led by Asen Admire Medals, and the defending goblins were led by Toad Horror Stabbed. Well, it looks like right off the bat, Asen outmatched the goblin with a cunning plan, and our attackers had a strong positional advantage. Very cool. Asin was also the first one to spill goblin blood. Oh, it looks like there were elves here as well. But I don't think there were Ililetha elves. These were probably stolen children who were raised in the goblin lifestyle. But anyways, scrolling down, it looks like some trolls were killed, as well as some goblins. You know, admittedly, this is the first time I've really attacked a place since this update has come out. This is fascinating. We can see this dwarf here actually smashed this goblin in the lower body, ripped off one of their hands, and then killed the goblin. <laughs> Wonderful. The only thing I can't figure out is it keeps referring to certain groups. The cremated torches clashed with 25 trolls in City Seduce, slaying eight. The earths of splattering led by the dwarf Einod Blue Axe Ochre Still clashed with 17 trolls in City Seduce, slaying 10. Good job, Einod. Yeah, I'm not too sure what those groups mean, but hey, whatever. We won, not a single loss. And it looks like we looted some more books as well. Let's take a closer look at that. Spoils Report. Oh boy, looks like a whole bunch of crap. Fantastic. Yeah, nothing really interesting here. Except for the Drawtha Bone Tolto. That's kind of interesting, some sort of an instrument, I suppose. We also did get a few books out of that deal, too. Again, just sitting out here in the desert. Oh, and how long will I sit here? Probably for quite some time. Well, anyways, I say we're on a pretty good streak here with this raiding, and I'm getting a real kick out of it. Let's say we head out on one more raid. I gotta admit, I think I got the bloodthirst in me. This is awesome. 
Once more, we'll hit up City Seduce, and we will pillage it. And once again, we'll send the Brass Spikes and the Sand Blades. They're doing a fine job, wouldn't you say? Go ahead, dwarves. You got it. And let's see. While the warriors are away, let's take a look in the fortress. Oh, here's something. We have some petitions available. And a forgotten beast. That's not the best news. The forgotten beast Cull has come. A great quadruped composed of vomit. It has a pair of spindly antennae and it has a gaunt appearance. Beware its deadly spittle. Hmm, not great. Seeing as how we have no warriors in the fortress currently. Well, hmm. We'll get back to those petitions after this. Well, it's looking like that creature's in the old fortress level, just off to the east a ways. And there is a giant cave toad right by it. That's interesting. Well, let's see how that plays out. Beast is moving in, spitting at the toad, fighting with the creature. Oh, toad's taking hits and is dead. Not an issue. And the beast, I am noticing, is locked here in this small little place. All right, well, that works out for us. Never mind, false alarm. Hmm, well, we'll have to keep that in mind. Another somewhat safely controlled beast that we will now ignore for several episodes anyways. Back to that petition. We have an Omud phrase brushed who wishes to reside in Monster Killer for the purpose of soldiering. Yeah, what the hell, come on in. A human hammer man. Yeah, that's very interesting. Not a monster slayer either. Just someone looking to make their way. I can respect that. Welcome to Ushang Bagush, human. Aha, and it looks like our raiders have returned. Fantastic, let's have a look. Mission report, Pillage City Seduce, summer 259. And once again, it looks like they head up, wreak all sorts of havoc, and return home with some treasure. And once again, it looks like the dwarves outmatch the goblins with a cunning plan, as well as a strong positional advantage. Very good. How's that, you rat bastards? The goblins tend to attack us maybe, what, once a year? But now we're hitting them rapid fire. I gotta say, I am totally loving this. Now let's see what we got for treasure. Spoils report. <laughs> oh boy, nothing exciting. Yeah, wow, I'm starting to be a big fan of the whole raiding thing. What a fool I've been. We should have been doing this all along. And with that in mind, you know, I have a bunch of peasants here in the fortress. They spend their time hauling stuff around. Nothing too thrilling. I'm thinking we should increase the size of our army. Right now we have two strong melee squads, as well as a support melee squad and a ranged support squad. But I'm thinking we should really have something more like 50 strong melee attacking dwarves. I mean, our fortress is pretty well defended now with these 40 dwarves, but I'm thinking we should get a few more in there. Yeah, definitely. But you know, before we do that, I think I'd like to go out and attack City Seduce one last time. We didn't really get a good haul this last mission, so I'm thinking we must have drained it of treasures. And so we're going to come up here, and this time we're going to raise City Seduce and attempt to destroy this site. And once again, we'll assign the sand blades and brass spikes. They seem to be doing a fine job. And I'll tell you what, dwarves, this time I'm not going to even wish you good luck. It'd just be an insult at this point. And while they're gone, we're still getting our tombs in order. We have almost all the coffins we need in place, which is great, and we are gingerly moving the bodies that were interred in our previous memorial hall down to this new, respectful one. Finally, a proper resting place. Rest well, you heroes. You've earned it. And on top of that, our new museum is looking very nice. One, two, three levels. Now I'm thinking we use the bottom level as our trophy hall, where we'll keep the corpses of monsters and beasts. It's the biggest section, which is nice. Plenty of room for dead beasties. And then the second level we'll use as our library. Still pretty sizable. Big enough for a bunch of books. And then the topmost level we'll use for artifacts. And yes, it is a pretty small level, but we can also expand it outwards if necessary. On top of that, it's also the most secure level because it is three levels up. We have to protect those things. Especially now we have a tavern here and all kinds of people visiting our fortress. Oh boy. Here's something. The Etten Adasp Rux Uz Tab Smug Sermak has come. A giant humanoid monster with two heads. Oh boy, that's very interesting. Well, I mean, our military is currently away raiding City Seduce. The competent portions of our military anyways. All we have here now are the Griffins of Steel and the Rough Lovers. Well, at this point, I'm not too sure what we can do exactly. Besides turn on the burrow and get everyone safely underground. And, uh, we'll also close up that entry gate. And on top of that, I'm also going to take the Griffins of Steel and the Rough Lovers, and I'll move them here to the bottom of our residence hall. And now I guess we'll unpause the game. Let's do it. Unpaused, and the creature is moving right in, charging for the fortress. Very quickly. Really hoping we can get this gate up in time. And it is up. Good. Fantastic. We still have a war dog outside, though. And the Etten is moving in after the creature. Oh, lost sight of it. The Etten has paused. And is going around. Still standing out in the desert good and is moving down the rampway unfortunately we have a whole bunch of dwarves here carrying stone coffins down to the new tomb just
Just really hoping they can get back in time. Let's go, dwarves. Let's go. The Atten is well on its way. And there is no way some of these guys are getting back to the fortress safely. Oh, come on. Hurry up, dwarves. Oh, hey now. I paused the game. Here we have Endok the Sandblade. I thought all the sand blades and brass spikes were out of the fortress now, but I guess he was a little late on the draw. Very interesting. It looks like he's headed up the rampway. Well, let's see how this plays out. Come on, Endok. You're our best hope right now. Heading up the ramp. He's going to run right into that Etten. Oh, there they are. They're fighting. Fighting. I'm seeing some blood. That Etten is panicking, running down towards the fortress. And... Oh, they're still fighting. Endok is chasing this Etten all up and down the rampway. The Etten is now enraged on the ground. Endok is hacking away at it with his axe. Pieces are flying off of the Etten. Come on, dude, hang in there. Oh, and he killed the Etten. Fantastic work, Endok. Oh, man, that could not have gone better. Truly epic. All right, come here, buddy. You're getting a nickname. Just gonna have a quick look at the guy. Endok is one of the sponsored dwarves in the fortress, so I have some familiarity with him. And one of his most interesting aspects is that he is often inflamed by hatred and easily develops hatred towards things. And so with that in mind, Endok, I bestow upon you the nickname... Hornet. Because I'm sure to that Etten, Endok must have seemed like an angry little hornet, buzzing around and stinging. Until the Etten died. Very good. Anyways, off with you, you bastard. What are you still doing hanging around this place? You're supposed to be out raiding. Get to it. <laughs> I love these dwarves. And I'm thinking we found a first candidate for our museum, huh? This Atten will be a perfect display item. Oh, but first it looks like the raiders have returned once more. Let's have a look. Mission report. Raid City Seduce. A summer 259. The raiders head up. Once more, severely outmaneuver those damn goblins. Killed a whole bunch of those bastards. And this time it says, in the late summer of 259, the forces of the Killer of Monsters rampaged throughout City Seduce. Destroying the place? I'm not sure. Let's take a look at the spoils report. Hmm, nothing thrilling. And having a look at the map, it does not look like the place has been destroyed entirely. Maybe we first have to kill all the goblins that live there. I suppose that would make sense. Soon then. Very soon. And you know what? I'm thinking on that note, we're going to start wrapping up this episode. We've had cliffhangers the last two episodes, and I don't want that to happen again. So then, let's see, all kinds of stuff happened. We finished foiling that goblin siege from last episode. Always good to see those bastards running for the hills. Our new catacombs are all set, ready to accept dwarven carcasses. And of course, we couldn't forget the watching sisters down here at the entrance. Very creepy. We're working on our new Heroes Hall, which is now completely carved out and smooth. Just have to figure out how to set it up now. Same goes for the museum. One, two, three levels tall. Another thing that happened that kind of stinks is that we decided against immediate war with the elves of Ilialetha, mostly because the human diplomat was at our fortress. On top of the fact that we really wanted to raid those goblins. I mean, the elves are irritating and all, but the goblins are the biggest threat at the moment. All right, but I did forget that those damn elves imposed that limit on trees that we can cut down. And then there were those wear tapir attacks. Hmm, we'll see. Anyways, and of course we also partook in some glorious raiding that I'd say went over fairly well for our first expedition. The nearby goblin pits of City Sidus have been reduced to 20 goblins, down from 75, and I'd say it's on its way out. Hopefully we'll polish it off next episode. And also, another thing I had mentioned earlier is that I'd really like to increase the size of our military. I'd really like to be able to erase those goblins. That would be glorious, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think I'll start putting work into that. It's gonna be awesome. But I'm thinking my favorite story from this episode by far was Endok the Hornet taking down that Etten all by himself, too. Wasn't that great? The fortress was in peril. Our most competent warriors were off raiding. But there was one warrior who was just a bit too slow. And it turns out that that warrior saved the day. Fantastic, really. Anyways, you bearded bastards, I uh, truly hope you enjoyed watching this episode, and I certainly hope you'll join me next time. Here in Usheng Bagush, Monster Killer! And until then, you bearded bastards, 